Hi everybody, Mr. Chris here. So we are going to be looking at our grammar for today. So please go with me to page 100, hmm, 81. 181, making pronouns agree with their antecedents. Remember, the term antecedent refers to the word for which the pronoun stands. You've got to make your pronouns agree with their antecedents in both number and gender. Let's take a look. So you are going to recall that there are you know, different types of pronouns, and in those different types of pronouns, there are a, a, there's a type of pronoun called an indefinite pronoun. Now, these indefinite pronouns uh, simply mean that there's, um, well, no, these indefinite pronouns come in different subtypes as well. And these subtypes are indefinite, singular, indefinite, plural, and then indefinite, either singular or plural. And so that's what, what A, B, and C are. So let's take a look. Use singular pronouns to refer to the singular indefinite pronouns, each, either, neither, one, Everyone, everybody, no one, nobody, anyone, anybody, someone, somebody. All right, so let's take a look at the two different examples that we have here. One of them is correct, and one of them is incorrect. First up, each of the girls came armed with their own ideas. Okay, now this sounds right. We often would say this, but it actually is incorrect. Why is that? The issue is right here. We've got a, a, an indefinite singular pronoun used right here, which means that each of the girls came armed with her own ideas. This is singular right here, therefore this has to be singular as well. It sounds kind of funky, but the reason for, for this uh, discrepancy, or this, the reason it sounds funky, is we've got this word right here, the word girls, which is plural, but this pronoun right here, is referring back to its antecedent right here, not to the word girls. Each of the girls came armed with her own ideas, okay? Next up, use plural pronouns to refer to the plural indefinite pronouns, both few, several, many. All right, let's take a look at our example. A few filled their nets with fish. So the word few is a, an indefinite pronoun that is, is always plural. Therefore, the next pronoun needs that is, that uh, that uh, follows this antecedent few needs to also be a. Uh, I mean, sorry, needs to also be plural. So a few filled their nets. All right, let's take a look at C. The indefinite pronouns some, any, none, all, most may be referred to by singular or plural pronouns depending on the sense of the sentence. Okay, let's take a look. Most of the trees have lost their leaves. So remember that the way we can figure out whether or not these indefinite either singular or plural pronouns are singular or plural is by looking at the overall context. And what that almost always means is looking at the prepositional phrase that follows the initial pronoun. So in this case, we have the pronoun most, and then we have, it's followed by this prepositional phrase right here. And we're looking for the object of the preposition. Is it singular or is it plural? Well, in this case, it's the word trees and it's plural. Therefore, this is going to be plural as well. Most of the trees have lost their leaves. Now, you don't really have to overthink that one. Like, it actually sounds natural just to say most of the trees have lost their leaves. That, that makes sense to us intuitively. All right, okay, let's take a look at the next one. Um, the word most in the next example is also a, an indefinite pronoun that can be either singular or plural. Um, so we're going to look at the context. Most of the castle, the word castle is singular, therefore this needs to be singular as well. Let's move on to D. Pronouns that refer to compound antecedents joined by and are usually plural. So our antecedents here are Noah, Kenneth, they're joined by the word and, therefore this needs to be there. Now that one is pretty much as intuitive as it gets, uh, and you probably have been doing that correctly all your life without thinking about it. E, pronouns that refer to compound antecedents joined by or or nor usually agree with the nearer antecedent. These are a little bit a little bit tougher to use correctly. Now this first example is going to make sense to you. It's gonna sound correct. And so let's take a look at that one. Neither Mark nor his brothers have received their passports. So in this case, we've got the conjunction nor. And so we're going to be using the, uh, we're going to be, going to be looking at the pronoun or the antecedent that is closest to the pronouns. In this case, that would be the, the word brothers. 
And so this word, uh, since brothers is plural, the word there needs to be used because that is plural as well. Now, let's take a look at the next example. This one's going to sound a little bit funkier. Neither Mark nor Tom has received his passport. Okay, so we once again have the conjunction nor, which means we're going to look at the closest um, uh, the closest antecedent, which is Tom, to this pronoun. And so Tom has received his passport. Um, so you have to look at the closer antecedent to make sense of that. All right, F, a relative pronoun. And re recall that a relative pronoun is a pronoun that introduces an or a dependent clause. And the relative pronouns are who, which, and that. And so a relative pronoun, who, which, that, agrees with its antecedent in number and so determines number in its own clause. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example here. So Kayla is the girl who is willing to lend her own books. Now in this case, what we've got going on is this. This is our primary verb. This is our primary subject. And then this is a predicate nominative. Now, um, who is willing to lend her own books? That is a clause that's being used as an adjective to describe girl. Now, in this case, the word girl is the antecedent. Therefore, this relative pronoun right here that introduces this entire clause needs to be matched up in number to the antecedent, which is girl. Therefore, the word who is going to be used because it's singular, and it matches up with the singular girl. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, the next one. Those are the girls who are willing to lend their own books. Okay, um, in this case, we have a, our primary verb right here, and then I believe uh, the word, our subject is going to be girls. I, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy right now on whether or not it's girls or those. I believe it's girls. And then we have a, uh, a clause here, which is who are willing to lend their own books. Now, in this case, this is our antecedent, the word girls, and then the word who is used again, but that's because the word who can be either singular or it can be plural. Um, but... As you, as you can note, uh, as, as we continue on down through this clause, we do have a plural verb and then a plural uh, word there. And so, sorry, I forgot to do that in the previous example. So here we have the, the singular is and the singular her. And so you can see how that whatever the word is here is going to determine how the rest of the clause then is, is, is set up. So whatever the antecedent is, that's how the rest of the clause needs to be set up that follows it. Okay. Let's move on to number two. Um, those were all dealing with number. Number two deals with gender. So let's take a look at a couple of these rules. Number uh, A, antecedents of masculine gender, male sex, are referred to by he, him, his. Mr. Wilson put some papers into his briefcase. Yeah, well, that's pretty straightforward. And then the same thing is true for the feminine gender, the female sex. And then there's antecedents of neuter gender, no sex, are referred to by it or its. All right. Um, rule D is changing a bit and let me just uh, discuss that a bit. Let me read to you the rule first and then the, and the examples, and then we'll take a look at uh, what's going on here. So antecedents of common gender, sex not known are referred to by he, him, or his. It is understood that the masculine pronouns include both male and female. Each speaker maintained his poise. That's correct. Each speaker maintained their poise. That's incorrect because the word each here is singular. Um, each speaker remained, uh, maintained his or her poise. That's awkward. Okay, so um, the, the last example there is actually grammatically correct, but it, it does sound awkward to always have to say his or her. Now, up until, I don't know, I guess fairly recently, um, the, the, uh, this rule was absolutely correct, where the word his uh, was a he or his, he, him, his. Those, those pronouns were always used to refer to both men and women, but that actually is changing to some degree, and it's mostly just about being politically correct, but also just sort of a recognition that, um, that you know, the, the world is more than just a bunch of men, I guess. And so, uh, so, so you will sometimes hear people say, say that instead of using his, they'll, they'll, they'll use the word her uh, to refer to either of the genders. So that's really, and it's really up to you. Um, in this case, since the rule here is being taught that you're going to be using he, him, or his uh, to speak for both men and women, I'm going to be following that whenever I do my grading. Okay, let's get one last um, sub point here, E. 
Antecedents that are names of animals are generally referred to by neuter pronouns. The tiger paced back and forth in its cage. If writers wish to add personality to these references, they often use masculine pronouns. The tiger performed really well during his time in the center ring. Of course, when a feminine role is suggested, feminine pronouns are used. A tigress feeds her cubs until they can find their own food. I also have noticed that sometimes we tend to refer to dogs more by uh, masculine pronouns and refer to cats as as uh, feminine pronouns. Um, but that that's just some that's uh, there's no particular reason for that except that cats I guess seem to be more feminine. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but yeah, anyway, but typically animals are referred to by in, in the neuter form, which would be its it or its. Um, and then sometimes we do split things up. All right, let's go to exercise A and look at a couple of examples here. So here are your instructions. One, underline the antecedents. Two, in each blank, write a pronoun that agrees with its antecedent and number. All right, let's take a look. Each of the men knew the danger of blank own mission. Now, what we're looking at in this case is that we have the, oops, I actually should get rid of that, sorry. Okay, um, what we have here is the antecedent each, so you want to underline that. Each of the men knew the danger of, and so each is a is an indefinite pronoun, and it's singular, therefore we have to have the singular his here. Each of the men knew the danger of his own mission. All right, number two, neither of the ladies kept her money, uh, or her, yeah, uh, neither, neither of the ladies kept her money in a billfold. Okay, so in this case, we our antecedent is neither, and that is also a an indefinite uh, singular, indefinite singular pronouns. Therefore, we have to use the word her here. Neither of the ladies kept her money in a billfold. All right, number three. Most of the frozen ground still had blank covering of brown pine needles. All right, so in this case, our antecedent is going to be the word most. And so what is the word most in this case? Let's see if we can recall. So I'm going to be actually be flipping back. Uh, here to page uh, to to our first page, and I'm going to see if I can I can find the word most here. So let's see. Yep, some, any, none, all, most. It can be either singular or plural. Therefore, I'm going to have to look at the context, which would means looking at the prepositional phrase that comes right after the antecedent. Most of the frozen ground. Okay, so we have the word ground to look at in this case. Um, okay, so most of the ground, I'm going to erase this because that's not actually the marking. So we're looking at ground. Ground is going to be singular. Therefore, we're going to use the singular form here. So, but most of the ground still had his covering. No, her covering. No, its covering. There we go. Most of the frozen ground still had its covering of brown pine needles. Okay, you're going to be getting numbers four through 15. Let's move on to exercise B. Insert in each blank a pronoun that agrees with its antecedent in number, rule 1F. So what was rule 1F? Rule 1F was a relative pronoun, who, which, that, agrees with its antecedent in number and so determines number in its own clause. All right, let's take a look. This is the book that had blank binding replaced. This is the book. Okay, so in this case, we're looking at the context. This is our relative pronoun right here, and it's referring back to this word right here, book. So um, book is singular, therefore this it, there, there's going to be a singular uh, pronoun in, in the blank as well. So this is the book that had its, that had its binding replaced. My grandfather is the man who sold blank coin collection. Hmm. So in this case, we're looking back to this word right here, man. So it's going to be his coin collection. Okay, I'm going to have you take a shot at numbers three, four, and five yourselves. All right, let's go into exercise C. In each blank, write a pronoun that agrees with its antecedent in gender. All right, so Zachary daydreamed about distant lands as what? Use chopsticks to eat the rice. So as he used chopsticks to eat the rice. So obviously he refer because uh, Zachary is obviously a, a man or a boy, a male. Number two, the plantation regained much of blank beauty in the spring. Well, the plantation is neutered, therefore it's going to be its. All right, I'm going to have you take a look at numbers three through ten. Continues on to the next page here. All right, let's go into exercise D. Cross out each pronoun that does not agree with its antecedent and write the correct pronoun above it. If a sentence is correct, write C to the left of the number. All right, let's take a look at number one. Many of the early schoolmasters taught Latin to his pupils. Hmm. 
So if you recall, there's the indefinite pronouns. And in this case, the indefinite pronoun uh, that we are referring to is some, any, none, all, most. And these can be either singular or plural. So we have to figure out um, from the context if it's going to be singular or plural. So in this case, we look at the prepositional phrase here of the early school masters. So masters is uh, the word we're actually looking at here, and it is plural. Therefore, this has to be plural as well. So many of the early school masters taught Latin to their pupils. Okay, so that one was, you probably actually could have caught that one without going back and doing the context, right? Because it sounded strange uh, for a reason. Many of the early school masters taught Latin to their pupils. Okay, let's go to number two. Either of the gardeners can tell you about his methods of fertilization. All right, so uh, in this case, we have to look at the word either, uh, and the word either is an indefinite pronoun, and which of the list does it come from? Well, it comes from um, the uh, very first list here, right here it is, either. And so it has to be singular. So let's take a look. Either of the gardeners can tell you about his methods of fertilization. The word his is singular as well, therefore this is correct. All right, let's go to number three. Each of the artists has displayed their paintings on the sidewalk. Each, 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 what is each? Each is used as what? Singular. It is singular. Therefore, this has to be singular as well. Each of the artists has displayed their paintings. No, has displayed his paintings. This is one of those cases where we're just going to use the word his to refer to either male or female artists. Okay, that's the three examples. I'm going to have you do numbers four through 15 there by yourself. Okay, exercise E, write sentences illustrating the following rules, rule 1A, 1B, and so on. All right, guys, that's going to do it um, for grammar. Uh, I hope all goes well. Please reach out to me with any questions if you, uh, if you have any. I um, hope it all goes well.